Some of you were hijacked. Just stand up. This one. Uh, some pubs, by the way, have one of them to show you how to get back to the start. So my name is Tony, I'm on the volunteers here. Over here we have Terry and behind Officer Greg. I asked Officer Greg to come forward a bit. So, we don't know exactly what officers wore on the Bay Road, but this is a good representation based on the large caliber picture you may have seen when you came in uh, earlier. Everything we have on show is more about the everyday crew members, such as myself and such as Terry. But you can see Officer Greg has lots of blings. He's got his tights on. He's got a much better bag than I have. Uh, feathers in his hat. Oh, he's got a commander. So every time he walks past a wicked soul, a uh, sailor, such as myself, he can use commander to show us all the And we have two commanders in our collection. He's got his boats and whistle, shows that he's in charge. Sit down then. Go sit down. Go sit. So it's possible that the whistle was used to give the signal to close the gun ports, and the signal didn't get out in time to close the gun ports, which is one of the reasons why the mayor sang as it was turning, the gun ports were open, the water rushed in, and it went down. So I so I'm wearing clothing that we know is a definite true form. I have my woolen hat, and there's a woolen hat exactly the same in that case over there. I have my jerkins. We've got about four to six jerkins in our collection. Some of them are laser. I can't afford lace. Terry can. Uh, I've got a pocket on the inside. I don't know if the toes you uh, some have buttons, they're all very different, they're all made of leather. Under my woolen hat, I have my coat. I can tie it into a nice knot when I'm on the deck, keep my hair in place, but more importantly for me, it stops other people's nits which become lice coming onto my hair, or my lice going onto other people's hair. And we have in our museum collection of 82 combs, or similar to this one, made of boxwood, we have one of ivory, which probably belongs to an officer, and some of our combs have original tuned knits in them, and we also have original tuned to fleece. So we know that our knits, because of the coif, the comb, the knits, and the fleece. I'm carrying the powder horn, so I can put powder in the gun. I have my bridges, I have woolen socks. In gallery, you'll see some woolen socks, but those woolen socks have had the heel cut off. That's so that when they're on going out to fight, they take their shoes off because they will slide at wear. They take their socks off because you will slide wearing your socks on a wooden ship. So they cut the heel off, they've got leg warmers, and they can just walk around the deck or move around the deck barefooted and have a better um, way of walking. Uh, my leather shoes are based on shoes in the museum. We have 331 shoes in the museum. Officer Greg might capture you at the end of your tour and ask you if you can tell us where all 331 are. So take there. Some of them are neither left or right. Some of them have laces. Some of them don't have laces. Some of them have buckles. Some are um, like mine. So, that fronted. We have a whole collection of sure those that have been around the museum. You will have already seen some of our shoes. So they're scattered almost everywhere. So I'm dressed as gun crew. Terry is dressed as gun crew. We have a couple of jerkins that have red crosses on them. And it's possible the gun captain wore these. We no longer have the red cross. But we have the stitch marks which show where red crosses were. So, possibly gun captain, I've gone through. As you go around the museum, you'll see some of the, the large guns. There were 39 large guns on the ship uh, when it went down in 1545. And just out of interest, 510 years ago, August 1510, the Mary Rose went out sail against the French near the French coast, uh, took on the uh, 
flagship of the French fleet, defeated that ship, sank it, and is possibly the first time ships with gun ports had a battle against each other. So this is one of the earliest ships that has gun ports and gun lids, so it can attack and do broadside against other ships. So, on the main deck, there are guns like this, the Alpha guns, and the Super Deluxe Bronze guns. The bronze guns fire iron cannonballs, which we call shot, which are brown and small. And if you look very carefully at those uh, brown cannonballs, the iron ones, they have an inch on them. So as it's flying at you at 700 miles an hour, you know it's come from Henry VIII, which is always comforting to know. These guns fire stone cannonballs, so the white ones are made of stone. Every gun is different. So the gun captain has a gauge. That gauge is the same diameter as his barrel. If the ball doesn't go through the gauge, it won't go with the gun. So there's possibly stonemasons on board who are chipping the ball down to the right side, ready to go into the right gun. So these guns are made of iron. They have strips of iron, called staves, random white or hoops are placed on them. The hoops can track and give the uh, gun its strength. It's made in the same way as a wooden barrel, hence the barrel. Behind it is the chamber. The chamber is hollow one end, but plugged the other. There's a wedge. The wedge is made of elm. The wedge is used to wedge the chamber to the barrel. And there are probably more wedges here to wedge the wedge to the chamber to the barrel so that no gas or flame can escape this here. The whole thing is of a gun carriage. All our gun carriages, irrespective of the gun, are made of owl. Owl has a uh, tight wood so that when the gun is fired, it will bounce or it will recoil. And you don't want it bouncing and then splitting the gun carriage. So owl is the ideal wood. <laughs> when it's in action, there's a pivot point here, and you push the back of the gun down, and that will raise the front so that you're aiming at the enemy. So four people would use would be the gun crew. Number one, that here. Number two there, number three there, number four there, and the gun captain, near enough what I tell you, would be shouting out the orders. The first order would be gun crew numbers. And the gun crew shout out their numbers. One, two, three, four. So the gun captain knows they're in their position. The gun is then slowly dismantled. So two and three remove the wedge. Okay. One, two, three and four remove the chamber. Now it's possible more likely, they will put a pole through and lift using the poles because this might be hot, it might be a bit too dangerous, and it also uh, distributes the weight. So one, two, three, and four, lift the chamber, and it goes upright. In a minute, once we demonstrate it, it'd be lovely to have a few people to show everyone else exactly how it's done. Number four inserts the shot. And that goes in the back of the barrel. But if you're not careful, it will roll out. So number three has a bit of wad. And that just goes in the back to stop the, the shot rolling. Mm. Number two inserts the charge. And we have evidence that the charge, the bag of powder, was in a bag, and that the bag goes in the chamber here. And then the wadding put down here as well, pinned in place. It's now ready to come back together. One, two, three, and four. Return the chamber. Two and three, return the wedge. It's now almost ready to fire. Number one primes the gun. Number one has a piece of wire, it's called a reamer. 
Lots of reamers on the main deck far end. Our reamers have all sorts of patterns on the, on the end, which tells us they belong to the individual gun captain and not to the ship itself. They um, personalise them. There's a little vent hole here, and the bag is burnt. The power is now trickling out. <coughs> Number two has powder horn. The horn has been hollowed out. It has powder in it, a lid, and a bit of powder trickles into the gun itself and touches the bag. The gun captain has a linstock. We've got lots of these in our collection, we've got lots on the main deck to go along. Many of them have dragons carved on the end. My favourite one is this. Uh, it has hemp rope and it's been dipped in saltpeter. And it's burning very slowly. Linstock is Dutch for slow burn or slow match. The gun captain shouts, have a care. And everyone gets out of the way. More than likely put their hands over their ears. Probably bend their knees to absorb the shock that's going to come through the deck and more than likely open their mouths. So the pressure which changes around them is also equalised in their skull and then their ears won't pop. <laughs> so have a hair, everyone gets out of the way, bends the knees, hands over, back and back. The gun captain is now ready to light the gun. If he were to shout fire, as you've seen in the films, there'd be mad panic because the crew of the ship's on fire. So the signal isn't fire. The signal is, give fire. Yeah. This is burning slowly. The gun captain can approach the gun at two arms length. He will light it. He's got about two seconds to get out of the way before it goes back. So, have a care, he will get out of the way. Give fire. He touches the bed hole, shuts the fire, and off goes the gun. The cannibal uh, shot leaves about 700 miles an hour. Mm. So you don't be standing in the way of it. So that's how it's done. Have we got some willing volunteers? And then after I'll answer any questions about the process. Any willing volunteers who would like to? Really, yeah. thank you. Three more for a family, if you don't mind. <laughs>